Quickly, I want to talk about Damaria's death. Three lessons for parents. It's really, really unfortunate and painful to find out that this 80-year-old girl's life was just cut short like that. Just like that. How did we get here that a 12-year-old girl child can summon such gods, can be so unforgiving to the extent of killing her cousin's sister just over a phone? Because the older girl was charging her phone and Damiria also went to charge her phone. That was where the issue started. There was a conflict, there was a problem. And in the night when Damaria slept, the 12-year-old suffocated her using a pillow. The worst part is that after she killed Damaria, she kept Damaria's body on the bed as if she was sleeping, arranged everywhere properly, arranged the scene, and went to her own bed in the same room and slept till morning. Girls that visited their grandmother for holiday, this holiday that we are all enjoying. If not for the camera, the CCTV camera in their home, they wouldn't have known what led to the death of that young child. I'm sure as a parent, you've learned your lesson. And there are different lessons. Yours may be different from mine. But I just want to share the three lessons I have learned from Damiria's death. First, a smartphone can cause a lot of harm to your child's life. You know, when we say these things, it all looks like, oh, that's what's happening. It's the Gen Z generation. If your child is not having a phone or doesn't have a smartphone, it looks like you're suffering. It looks like you're not capable as a parent. Your child begins to feel segregated. It begins to feel like there is something not complete. Because every other child has a phone out there. Joella did a video. In fact, I'll put it on the comment section. Why your child doesn't need a phone yet. See, let me tell you. You may not understand, but as an adult... You know how addicted you can be. You know how your phone has become part of you. That even if that phone goes faulty for a few days, you're not yourself. That's what a phone does to your child. A phone can cause a lot of havoc that you may not even know is as a result of that phone that that child has. Some of you, you're dealing with disobedience. You're dealing with children that are not responsible. Your child is not willing to do anything in the house. He's not willing to be beneficial to himself, herself, or the family, or to you as a parent. Because of a phone, it has led to disobedience. It has led, led to negligence, lack of focus in academics, in everything, even at home. So many wrongs a phone can do to your child. Okay, if your child must have a phone, why not regulate it? Why not say, okay, once daily by so, so so time in the evening, one hour, you have your phone. You can imagine how attached that cousin was to her phone, that just a phone, a conflict that was caused by phone, will generate so much hate. So much anger in her to the point that she had to kill her blood. That phone is a distraction your child doesn't need because your child cannot control it. Number two lesson to learn from this occurrence. Be careful not to raise hardened kids. I just did a video. You can go check the video. Behaviors that lead you to raising a hardened kid without even knowing. It was clear that that cousin was hardened, was mean, unforgiving, wicked. See, whether we like it or not, a lot of things kids do is under the influence of an adult. Your kids say some words to their sibling and you just overlook it. You hear words like, I'll show you Pepe, I'll teach you a lesson. By now, you should know who I am. I don't take nonsense. And you, you, at that point,
point as a parent, you should stop everything you're doing. Call that child. Come. What did you just say? What, what did you sit down? What did you just say? It begins from there. In a family, there should be room for forgiveness. There should be room for tolerance. There should be room to overlook matters. And that is how you should train your children. That is what you should keep telling them. Stop raising unforgiving children. That cousin was unforgiving. The third point to learn, we need to do better as parents. We need to do better. Every day, we see a lot happening in society. As parents, your ears are full. When your kids come back, they tell you, Mommy, this happened in the class. This is what this child said. This is what happened in church children's section. And you're like, what's, what's going on in homes? We need to do better. As I'm talking, I'm talking to myself. I'm also learning. I'm speaking to myself. I know it's not easy. It's hard work. But we need to step up. We need to do better. A lot of areas we have not been looking into. We need to begin to look into it. We are losing it. How often do we teach love? In the things we do. In the way we speak. In what we say to our kids. How often do we teach love? Why are we raising, why are we raising monsters? Why are we raising people that do not have a conscience? A little girl like that. Being able to cover up a crime scene, arrange everything, if not that camera, nobody will believe that is that 12 year old. Parents, we need to do better. It's unfortunate that Maria ended this way. But this is a lesson to all of us parents.